you know, the unbearable weight of being so smart, right? Because it's like, a lot of times I just wish people would take me for my looks, you know, that they would just say like, listen, you know, I just want to walk in and just like be admired for piece, the piece of meat that I am. You know, piece we're of like, meat. Yeah, I think exactly. that's another just Nick Cage movie. Like, the just piece whatever. of meat like, that you I know, am. Like, I, do, I wear stuff like this and it's just like, okay, Barry, another thirst trap. And yeah, you're damn right, another thirst trap. Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Berry, served by Applebee's. Oh my God, it is not easy being such a piece of A, but I managed to handle it somehow, some way. It is noon on a Wednesday on Peacock, but of course, it is five o'clock somewhere, so it is the Fantasy Bowl Happy Hour. He's Jay Croucher. I'm Matthew Berry. Lots to get to today. Lots to get to. But and, first, and, yeah. I just want to talk about, because we had a little chat about Nick Cage after the show yesterday, yes. because you've referenced the unbearable weight of massive talent. Yes, I, me I, and Nick have that in common. Yeah, I asked you if you'd seen the film Pig, starring Nick Cage, and I've, you haven't, but then you said that you'd seen the film Babe. Correct. <laughs> Which is also... Which is about a pig. <laughs> yeah, but you've conflated... See, there's two different types of film genres. There's light pig films, yeah. and then there's dark pig films. Right. And they're at polar opposite ends. Yes. I don't really know how to explain pig, but Nick Cage plays like a... It's like a pig guy. He's a pig right. guy, and it's, I think he's a truffle hunter. It's very dark, but uh, very it's dark. not like... Very dark. Right, but I like... I... And this is, makes sense, because I like light pig movies yeah i like light movies you know why because i have love in my heart <laughs> yeah, you you darkness. who have like a grinch sized heart and you have darkness and you merely watch movies so that you can then spoil them for other people you like the dark stuff that's I right just, you're the, the gory stuff the like because i always see you know the movies you enjoy are a reflection of how you are yeah i like happy endings because i have you know happy endings in my life in terms of you know in in terms of love and romance and you know in and uh in good tidings yeah i'm more you, of a manchester by the sea kind of percent. requiem for a dream no, type we, of guy. we took we took yeah. a show poll the other day you were voted most likely you know most likely to uh, to you know hunt us all down <laughs> yeah. you know in, in the darkness <laughs> incredible poll. so i mean right it was it was a weird poll i'm not gonna be honest <laughs> that we decided to do that polls. like who among us do we think is the you know is the darkest uh, and you know you won by a landslide yeah landslide i should say um okay or a landslide Land either side. way all right let's Either bring way, us back i don't know when, when you're as hot as i am sometimes <laughs> you can't speak so i'm like one of those i'm like one of those foreign models you know what i mean this is like you know like i'm good to look at like yeah. my ig page is nothing but thirst traps <laughs> at matthew barry tmr if you want to just see nothing but me looking like a you at, know and matthew barry tt uh, yeah trap. exactly just a total like well you know listen dad bods are in they're in all right let's bring us back into the light roto world headlines yeah <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah. Let's go back into the darkness now into Matt Everflus and the Chicago Bears. Yeah. One of the darker teams at the moment. They got a pretty dark fantasy situation. Yeah, that would have been a better movie for Nick Cage <laughs> to like just kill a bunch of people in his bear. Bear? Instead of instead yeah. of pig. Let's get him playing quarterback. I'm Chicago just, Bears playing like, that offensive. How, line. how bad could he be? Yeah, so Matt Everflew said that the Bears will ride the hot hand at running back between David Montgomery and Khalil Herbert. So the question becomes, what are you doing with this backfield? Yeah, I will drink to that. I think we're supposed to set up. We've, we forgot, because neither of us are a professional host. And by neither of us, I really mean you. Uh, we were supposed to set it up that we were going to do a little bit here, you know, because, again, happy hour we're in a bar, we're all drinking. You know, would we drink to that? If, if we'll, we'll set a premise here under our Roto World Headlines uh, segment here. We'll set a premise. Will you drink to this? And so Iberflu's saying they're going to go with a hot hand at running back. And for me, I will sort of buy that. I, I think Khalil – I understand the numbers don't totally suggest this, uh, in terms of their usage so far, but uh, I think Khalil Herbert is the better running back. I, I from the eye test. By the way, he's got he's got a higher yards per carry average. He's got more yards after contact. Like he's, 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 you know, if you see the seasonal stats here on your screen, you'll see that David Montgomery certainly has more counting numbers. You know, in terms of the receipt, it's certainly much more used in the receiving game. But like almost two to one in terms of the rushing yards for Herbert. They've had basically the same number of rush attempts there. Um, I, Khalil Herbert certainly is the better fantasy player based on the same number of rush attempts and yet five less receptions for Herbert. I, I think Iberflus is sitting there going like, I got to do something. I got to figure this out. Like, even for him, he's kind of like, oh, wow, we're not good. Like, that's clue, you know, six weeks into the season, I think he's, he's kind of figured out. So I am willing to uh, willing to drink to this. Um, 
Uh, Are they both flex guys? Both low end flex guys at the moment? You just have to grit your teeth and probably start both of them? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you're probably still, you know, ranking Montgomery ahead of Herbert. That's what I did this week. Just, But I, I do think, like, Herbert needs to be rostered in every league because there's just such massive upside here. You don't love them on the road this week, Monday night at New England. Like, you can, you've been able to run in New England, but the defense looks so bad, and like Belichick against Fields just doesn't feel like a fair fight at this point. No. So uh, I think both are shaky flex plays in week number seven. Uh, but, uh, but I do think that uh, I'm buying the statement here that it is not the Montgomery show and then Herbert's an insurance back, that on a week-to-week basis it could be either one of them. So I think this is more about lowering Montgomery's value than it is necessarily having a role for Herbert that you feel good about starting him. Yep. Keenan Allen, who's been dealing with a hamstring injury for what feels like eternity, is allegedly on pace to return this week. So uh, returning to the gimmick, are you drinking to that, that Keenan Allen is a guy that you're comfortable putting in your lineup? Sure, you had me at Seattle. I mean, no team in the NFL allows more yards per reception to the slot Then the Seattle Seahawks, they've allowed four touchdowns. That's tied for the fourth most. They give up a ton of yards, over 15 yards for reception. Obviously, Allen plays the slot here. So, yeah, full steam ahead. Allen's out there. If Allen's out there for the Chargers, he's out there for me. I'm as a wide receiver, too, because I still think the touchdowns are more likely to go to Mike Williams. But, right, he comes in at wide receiver 15 in my initial week seven ranks. I I will drink to that. Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, just two guys that you just have to start. I don't know what the, we need to come up with a line or, or a name for what the line is among guys who are just so talented that you have to start. I think it's probably the Deontay line, maybe the Amari Cooper line, but oh, Mike that's Williams. That's a good one. Who's the, that's a good suggestion. Please tweet us at the, uh, use the hashtag FF Happy Hour and tweet at Matthew Berry TMR, at Croucher JD, and tell us who you think that line should be. Because this used to be like the, I used to do an old baseball podcast. You know, all of longtime fans remember this. I used to do a baseball podcast, and it was the Wandy Rodriguez line, the Wandy line. Yeah. <laughs> Right, Wandy Rodriguez. I remember Wandy I have a, Rodriguez. Yeah, Wandy Rodriguez is always just like just good enough. Oh. And if you're below the Wandy line, you're out. Like anyone Jeff above, Supon, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So right, so the Wandy, the Wandy line. I, we need a new who that person is. Deontay's a little bit too good. Too good. Yeah. You know, Brandon Cooks maybe. I, yeah, I don't know. It needs. To, it also needs to be kind of a funny line. So funny name. So, so that's the thing. Is the Mike Williams line doesn't work. No, it's not no. Identifiable. It's, it's, the Mike it, line doesn't work. No, it it, it doesn't like. Neither does like the Court and Sutton line, no. you know, like the, anyway. So maybe we'll, it's the we'll, Michael Gallup line. And maybe. Dak Prescott is determined to play in week seven against the Lions. The betting line for this game is Cowboys minus seven. So the bet MGM, they think that he is going to play. So are you drinking to Dak Prescott should be started against the Lions in week seven? If he plays, I assume you are. Yeah, I mean, he, he's my sixth best quarterback this week. Again, you had me at the Lions here. No team in the NFL um, uh, just gives it up the way the Detroit Lions uh, do. Four of the five quarterbacks they've faced this year, Detroit, have had at least 18 fantasy points. They're giving up 22.5 fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks. You think about, um, uh, you know, this offense coming off of the bye. I, I'm sorry, the Detroit Lions coming off of the bye. I think they'll be prepared for Dallas. I think they'll be able to move the ball somewhat. Maybe, you know, I'm still taking the Cowboys to win this one. But, yeah, I mean, I think Dak coming back into this game with a matchup, he's going to want to sort of show off a little bit. Like, they're not bringing him back just to hand off and be conservative. Yeah. So, I, I do think it's a big game for Dak in his return to a Lions defense that's bottom seven in the NFL in terms of most passing yards allowed per game over the last four weeks. Yeah, I think the Lions can prepare for Dallas. Like, if I was playing against the Cowboys, I could prepare to defend C.D. Lamb. I'm not sure it's going to really matter, though. That is a bad defense with not much ceiling at the moment. Okay, the last headline is around Deshaun Jackson, who has been signed by the Ravens to the practice squad. Are you drinking to Deshaun Jackson being fantasy relevant? I'm going to bet on sobriety. Yeah, no, I'm not. I will not say Laheim to Deshaun Jackson returning to the NFL or Baltimore. You know, like, whatever. You know. He had, two, he had two two ninety yard receiving. He had two more ninety yard receiving games than DeAndre Hopkins did last year. But it's just going to be dependent on the deep ball. And the issue is, is that Rashad Bateman is barely startable, and he's a much better version of Deshaun Jackson. Yeah, I mean, like, so the last time he was a top thirty wide receiver was twenty eighteen. Okay, it's a like long time ago. It, it could now he's on the field with Lamar Jackson. Could Lamar Jackson chuck it deep and he comes down with it and has a sixty yard touchdown pass? Sure, of course. Like he's got big playability in theory. But, right, to your point, 
Bateman's barely startable. He's a much better player. Duvernay feels like um, he's a better bet for, for consistent fantasy production than Deshaun Jackson. Obviously, you have Mark Andrews. So now, even before you get to the running backs, like he's the fourth receiving option on a team that is, you know, somewhat balanced on offense. I, he's, he's a name, but this is something that you can ignore because the idea is you'll never know exactly when you to start Deshaun Jackson. So, no thank you. Yeah, I think we, we talked about it yesterday, but it, it is insane that between the Chiefs and the Ravens, there's only four guys that you want to start. And this yeah. Baltimore offense, which is really, it's heliocentric. It's just all Lamar Jackson. He accounts for an insane amount of their total yards. What does heliocentric yard. mean? Uh, it's like an NBA thing that slipped in. It's like, it's when it all revolves around one person. So, like, Luka Doncic is heliocentric. I think Lamar Jackson is the same. So... So on this show, oh, no. I'm heliocentric. Go. Yeah, you're heliocentric. I am. Yeah, right? you're the I, mean, Luka like, I mean, like I am fair, obviously. The show's called Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Barry. Heliocentric. <laughs> yeah, you How like that. How about heliocentric with yeah. Matthew Barry? I like HC? that. Yeah. Yeah, I so like that. Okay, fair it's, enough. It's you and Lamar Jackson. Pretty much. And everything is just, it's Lamar Both of us playing Andrews. for a contract this year. <laughs> yeah, for, yeah, yeah, exactly. M- Lamar might be on a new team next year, just like... Just like me. Just like I mean, you. like, whatever. I, you know, after 15 years, I left ESPN. Who knows? NBC could be like, yeah, we're done with you. Oh, we don't know what we bought. We're out. We're, right. oh, we're out. We're peacing out. Like, okay. wouldn't be, I wouldn't, by the way, wouldn't blame NBC. <laughs> wouldn't, I would totally, like, I get it. I got sold well, to Bill of Goods. Yeah, maybe there'll be a, a, a Matthew Berry TMR tweet similar to what Rashad Bateman tweeted yesterday before deleting it. Just a little, uh, just a little lol. Yeah, yeah. L O L. Yeah, wonder um, what that was in relation almost to. Almost 1,800 <laughs> likes before he deleted. Before it. he deleted that very quickly. <laughs> Have to assume that that was based on um, him watching our show. He just he finds it enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're a funny show. Or or <laughs> him having this. I let me put it this way. I had that reaction to the Ravens signing Deshaun Jackson. It wouldn't surprise me if other people did as well, including perhaps Mr. Bateman. I think that's reasonable. Okay, we are going to go to break when we come back. Are you keep sure? it open or close it out oh. with Denny Carter. Yeah, more bet, more drinking. You get it? Like it's because we're in a bar. It's it's supposed to be sort of like an Applebee's, but it's a bar and we're drinking and there's pinball machines and right. So right, that's the idea. Because that was like, will I drink to that? And then the next segment is keep it open or close it out. Yes. Like a tab. Yeah, like a bar tab. But like a bar, a bar tab. Right. Yeah. I just want to make sure everyone gets what we're going for. More to come. Maybe. You guys have some really good players on offense. Why, why haven't you been able to put together a full game yet this year? Yeah, I don't know. that's a great question. It's a fair question. I don't know. I mean, obviously, if I knew, we, we wouldn't be in this spot, right? We're in a pretty bad predicament right now. All right, Matt LaFleur having a great time with his Packers suddenly reeling. Can't beat yeah. the Giants, all the Jets. Can't win in London, can't win in, in Wisconsin. America. Right, yeah. but good news. They, could win, they can win in Washington. They're going to play the Commanders this week. That's, <laughs> Five and that, a half is point the, that is uh, right. Yep. That is the cure to all ills is and playing my Commanders. Yep. We're going to talk. My ab- in-the-news Commanders. Always in the news. Always. It does seem like they're always in the news. A little and bit rarely, And rarely for what happens on the field. It's rarely for Exactly, what because if we were to talk about what happens on the field, it would be a Taylor Heineke discussion. And, and glug, no one glug. that. Okay. Denny Carter is not going to join us. He's too busy digging deep into Nick Cage's think early of, filmography. Think about how low a show we've gotten to be. You know what I mean? Like, we, NBC signed me, and they were like, oh, we have high hopes for Barry. We have, you know, this is going to be high. great, right? And then, like, you know, whatever. And like, hey, I kind of want a bar theme, and like, whatever. Mm. We've done some stuff. And like, no, no, I'll, I'll, let me put the Australian on, and you know, whatever. I mean, like, I've just made some bad choices, clearly. <laughs> but what the, and so. And so now, like, we've gotten to a point as a show where we can't even get Denny Carter on. Like, yeah. that's how low we are. You can't. Do you understand? Like, I mean, that's a, that is that is the below the Mendoza line. Yeah. That is just like when you like, like it's one like we we went from literally like a couple of weeks ago we had the second gentleman. Yeah. We had the we had the second most powerful spouse in America, the man married to our vice president. Um, on this show, and now we can't even get Denny Carter to show up. It's been a steep fall. Yeah. Do you want to go on the Fantasy Fall Happy Hour with Matthew Berry, Denny, or do you want to watch like the Face Off? Right. <laughs> exactly. Rock. I'm yeah. going to watch Face Off. It's yeah. fantastic. He's like, do I have to? Yeah. Denny Carter, do I have to? No. No, Denny, you do not. It's fine. So we push on without him into yep. keep it open or close it out. Right. And the premise of this is simply, it's not season long. It's just this week. Are right. we starting or sitting these guys? And the first guy. 
tight end to Matt LaFleur is Aaron Jones at your commanders. Uh, he scored over 10 fantasy points once in the last four games, but I think you just have to keep on starting Aaron Jones. Yeah, I, 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 I think you do. I mean, I, I, yes, I am keeping it open. I am going to start him this week. I haven't running back 10 of my initial ranks here. Uh, I, I get it, right? There's, there's a concern. But um, since, since week three, Washington bottom half of the NFL in terms of rushing defense. As you mentioned, the Packers are a favorite here a, a, as well. And so Jones, I think they have to get back to quote, quote unquote winning football. And I think when they have, when they've had these struggles in the past, Aaron Rodgers and their offense, they've gone back to sort of basics and on the road at Washington, I think they're just going to want to run the ball. So I think it's a lot of Aaron Jones. I think it's a lot of AJ Dillon, especially in a week in which, you know, uh, Dalvin Cook is out. Miles Sanders is out. We might not have James Conner on Thursday night. Like, there's a bunch of – Damon Harris might not play Monday night. Um, there's – chances are you're sifting around looking for a running back here. I don't know that you're going to have a luck, the luxury in Week 7 to say, like, nah, I'm good without Aaron Jones. I understand the production hasn't been there recently, but whatever. I'm still starting him. Again, happiness is seeing the commanders on your schedule. Yeah, I think that you hit on it that – the pivot from this disaster is not, they're not going to pivot to Alan Lazard and Romeo Dobbs saving the season. It's going to be leaning more on the run game, more Aaron Rodgers in like a superstar Ryan Tannehill type of mold, which he has been in the past. Uh, concerns about the receivers for Green Bay in this game uh, between Dobbs, Lazard, these types. I think you're just rolling. I mean, you're rolling the Lazard day, out over Dobbs? I, I, I'm rolling. I'm, I'm definitely uh, rolling Lazard out over Dobbs. Lazard scored, I mean, quite a bit, right? I mean, so uh, Lazard for me this week comes in at wide receiver 34. So am I, you know, definitely starting him? No, he's outside my top 30. He's a wide receiver four. But I do think there's some upside there. Dobbs comes in at 39 for me, just in case you were wondering. Washington, for as bad as they've been, they've actually played decently defensively in the secondary over the last four weeks. They're top 13 in the NFL in terms of pass defense. Like I said, Packers are favored here. I think they go conservative on the road. I think they run more. But it does seem like, I want to say this is off the top of my head, but I feel like Lazard has scored something like four out of the last five games that he's been active. Like there is, there is definitely a, uh, a touchdown mentality to Lazard. So if I'm starting a Packers wide receiver, give me Lazard over Dobbs because I think he's the, I think he's the better wide receiver at this point. He has more, more of Aaron Rodgers' trust and he's a better bet to score a touchdown. Yep. Let's take a look quickly at Aaron Jones's receiving stats, uh, which have propped up his fantasy sure. uh, production a little bit. Uh, but at the same time, they are career lows. He's still getting some targets. He's getting PPI. He's basically three receptions every single game. But uh, that is, these are lows relative to what he's done previously. You know, 2.8 receptions, lower since 2018. 20 and a half receiving yards, again, lower since 2018. And then yards per reception and yards per target, also at their lowest since 2017. I mean, he's still getting something there at least, which props you up, gives you an extra four, five yeah, points yeah. per game. But at the same time, not I, ecstatic about his Yeah, production. the production hasn't been there recently. I get it. But again, the, 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 talent, the, the talent and the matchup here keeps him in my lineup. I'm keeping it open on Aaron Jones. Free Aaron Jones! From, free him. All right. We also need a free offense. Tony Pollard, who yeah. uh, is a much better real-life uh, real running back than fantasy running back at the moment. He did have 11 carries last week, but 44 yards, only a couple of receptions. Are you starting... Aaron Jones, are you keeping it open? Uh, sorry, Tony Pollard, keeping it open against the Detroit Lions. I, ideally, no. I, look, it is Detroit, right? Since over the last four weeks, no team in the NFL has given up more yard, rushing yards per game than the Detroit Lions. Uh, having said that, he's had fewer than 11 rushing attempts in four out of six games so far this season, just three total receptions over the last four games. So they're not using him in the passing game. So he's splitting basically the rushing work with Ezekiel Elliott. And unless he has the big play, like two weeks ago, he had the big 40-yard something run, touchdown run, great. And he has that big playability. And against Detroit, you could certainly see that happening here. But, but if he's splitting the run, if he's not involved in the passing game, which he's not, so now you're like, okay, you're hoping he scores a rushing touchdown. And if they get in close, they're going to Ezekiel Elliott, unless it's a two-minute situation and he just happens to be out there. But the odds of that are unlikely over the last three games. Tony Pollard, on a points-per-game basis, is running back 47. And so while I get the matchup here with Detroit, and that's certainly tantalizing, and you might be desperate given, um, you know, given all the buys and the injuries, 
he comes in at 27 for me. So he's a low end flex. And as we've said, especially in PPR, generally speaking, when you're talking flex, you want a wide receiver there. Yep. Let's take a look at his stats side by side with Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, neither of these guys have lived up to what was hoped for them in the preseason. Zeke did break out a little bit against the Eagles, but Zeke's getting the lion's share of the rushing attempts, 94 to 55 and thus outgaining him on the ground. Neither are getting any receiving work of relevance, and then they both end up in largely the same play, I mean, uh, same place with fans I mean, that's production. The, that's the thing, right? With Zeke, it's just been a volume thing. They're both at about, you know, almost 60 fantasy points, if you see it there on your screen. 59.8 for Zeke, 58.1 for Tony Pollard, and yet uh, almost two to one. Uh, Zeke has touched the ball more than Tony Pollard. 100 touches this year so far for Ezekiel Elliott and you know, Tony Pollard's like got 60. So, um, you know, almost a two to one uh, difference there in the touches. They have about the same number of uh, fantasy points, which you get. Pollard's more of a home run hitter. Uh, Zeke is grinding out singles. Yep. But, but I will say Zeke actually looked pretty good against Philadelphia on Sunday night, and that's a tough run, de run defense, and now he gets Detroit. Yep. Another guy who's getting, well, who got a lot of volume last week is Eno Benjamin of the yeah. Cardinals. Had 15 carries, but just didn't do anything with them. I'm not sure how much that was his fault versus the offensive line, but was that enough for you to start him against the Saints on Thursday night? I think so. He comes in at running back 24, me. 87% of the running back snaps in week six. As of this broadcast, James Conner and Daryl Williams are not practicing. It is the Thursday night game against the Saints. And, you know, New Orleans... New Orleans uh, is giving up a ton of points over the last four weeks. They're a bottom three scoring defense in terms of most total points given up per game. So Benjamin, who, uh, who got 18 touches in week one, uh, got three receptions. They use him in the passing game. They've used him in the passing game throughout the year. Uh, again, I wish he'd had more production, but I'm encouraged by the 18 touches. I believe he's a talented running back. It's not a matchup that scares you. No. And we're week seven by Mageddon. I'm starting Eno Benjamin. I'm keeping it open on him as a top 20 play this week. Yep. Cardinals Assuming are... Connor is not activated. Yep. Cardinals are two and a half point favorites in that game, which lines up as another Thursday night extravaganza. I mean, the Saints are so beat up, dude. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's, it's, it's really, really bad. Yeah. So I think while the Cardinals have not looked great so far this year, they catch the Saints on a short week at the right time here, especially by the way, Saints having to travel west. Game is in Arizona. Yeah. Speaking of not looking so great this year, DJ Moore, yeah, DJ Moore, right, right, okay. uh, who was also burdened by immense talent, but uh, has not been able to translate that into production. Not sure that's his fault. He's stuck at seven no, times he's burdened for seven by a, yards. You know, immensely bad quarterback play. Yeah. So, is there any hope for his value going forward? No, Robbie Anderson, new quarterback situation, or are you closing it out on DJ? Moore? I'm closing it out certainly for this week. He's wide receiver 39 for me as we head into week seven, right? If there's a positive here, he's out there a ton. 93% of the snaps so far this year. And they're targeting him more. But against Tampa Bay, um, which is a top 10 pass defense over the last four weeks as well, DJ Moore's had single-digit fantasy points uh, three different times. He's had under 60 receiving yards in every game this season. He's always been a volume play. He's never been a touchdown maker. So, like, you're really hoping he gets in the end zone. And how, how likely do you think it is he gets into the end zone P.J. Walker had a negative average depth of target. Yeah. Think about that. Like, average depth of target, how far <laughs> down the field is he – Is he? Um, how far down the field is P.J. Walker throwing the ball? He's actually not. As you see it here on your screen, you see all those green dots. Those are completed passes. You see that blue line? You see that blue line? That's the line of scrimmage. And you notice how many green dots are behind the line of scrimmage. There's literally, Jay, if you look at there on your screen, there's one green dot. One green dot on the other side of the line of scrimmage for a completion. And as far Just. as I can tell, that looks like a two-yard completion. <laughs> like two yards past the line of scrimmage. Uh, I mean, it's it's unbelievable. I mean, it's not even five. It's, it's, it's on the wrong side of the five-yard line. I, it's like... I could do that. Well, this is what I was going to say, because this is one of those things, like seven targets for seven receiving yards. It's one of those things where it's like, you know, when Jordan Spieth misses a three-foot putt, I'm like, oh, I could have made that. Sure. When Carlos Alcaraz misses like an easy overhead smash at the net, oh, I could have made that. It's like, if I got seven targets in an NFL game, I, could I get more than seven yards? Probably not. Uh, no. But it would be in the realms of possibility. But right. it wasn't helped out. Just if they're playing, because probably what, well... The problem is, is they wouldn't play up the line of scrimmage. They'd well, look at you and yeah. they'd see they'd see the little gut. 
that you hide with your baggy clothes, but they'd see like the little <laughs> gut. By the way, I do that too. Make no mistake. That's a, a helpful hint for you bo guys out there with the dad bods. Like everyone's like, oh, Matthew, you're so skinny. And it's like, well, baggy clothes. Honestly, I'm not skinny at all. It's just, it's baggy clothes. The, if, if, if you take anything from today's episode and two words of advice, baggy clothes. Baggy clothes are your best friend of the world. They say best ba friend. Ba best friend, best friend. Because like, if I pull it tight, you can see like, that's my, it's I like got a dad bod here. Yeah, more of that. Yeah. Yeah, there you are. Bang. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's Wednesday. It's, it's, yeah. It's, that's, well, yeah, a thousand percent. <laughs> I can't believe Denny Carter didn't want to show up for this. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm a man. Anyway, oh, the fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, is that, yes, they would look at you and they'd be like, oh, we're not going to play off the line of scrimmage. We're going to play off, you know, but like if they were playing back, yeah. then you catch the ball and you fall forward. At least you have. Yes. But like that's almost impossible to do seven targets for seven yards. Well, the thing is, is that I need an eight yard reception. So I've got right. one NFL tackle in me and then I'm out for the game. So Obviously. I need an eight yarder. So it doesn't really matter. All Obviously. Right. The but fact of the matter is, is um, no, we're closing it out on DJ Moore. Honestly, if you wanted to drop him, I get that. Wow. Unless, look, I'm not dropping him. It depends, but I, I get it. I, until he's out of Carolina, yeah. like there's just no we're, – we're six weeks into the season. Like it's not like one of those, hey, he's had a couple bad games. Yep. Like at this point, even Allen Robinson has had a good game. Well, I was going to say, like if, he got, if DJ Moore got traded to the Rams, he might be a top ten wide receiver. Yeah, of course. Like we know, the, we know the talent, you know, yep. it, and – it's really amazing, just but feels like because because CMC is out on the on the waiver wire or the trade market for in real life, you know the Panthers said so maybe they trade DJ Moore. They've got to they've got to just burn it to the ground and, and start over there in Carolina. Yep. Um, so uh, listen, I'm surprised they haven't called uh, Washington and gotten like three first round picks. Yeah, because you know what, like whatever what, there's that not? Carolina to Washington wow. uh, uh, pipeline. All here. Right, let's jump into George Pickens who didn't do much. Last week uh, against the Pats, six targets, th only three receptions, 27 yards. It was the Chase Claypool show largely. Does Claypool's big game, does that make you want to close it out on George Pickens against the Dolphins on Sunday Night Football? Depends what you need. He's wide receiver 34. So I'm, I'm, I'm borderline. If you're in that range for a, a wide receiver, which you might be given all the big names that are by this week, like Jefferson and Thielen, like, uh, like A.J. Brown, like Cooper Cup, like Stefan Diggs and Gabe Davis, um, like Mark East Brown, he's out this week as well due to the injury. So, you know, you might be searching around. So I kind of like him. Like, the fact of the matter is, is that he's he's played 75% or more of the offensive snaps in four or six games this year. He's seen six or more targets in now four straight games here. Dolphins 26th against the pass over the last four weeks. Like, you can throw on Miami, and I think they're going to have to, whoever is the quarterback for uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers on Sunday night, that game right here on NBC and Peacock, of course, I'm a company man. So he comes in at 34 for me. Again, high-end wide receiver four, but if you're sitting there in the borderline of that section, I'm, I'm more prone to keep it open on pickings than not. I believe Claypool's production has come as a result of Pat Fryermuth's uh, missing time due to the concussion. Okay, well, let's take a look at what uh, Chase Claypool had to say after the game against the Patriots. Seems like he's having a bit of fun. Okay. <laughs> Random. How does it feel to get a win like that? Oh, it feels awesome. Uh, Gunner, come here real quick. <laughs> he gave me a celebratory dip. It's my first time ever. I can't really, with all these lights, but uh, it feels good. So then Chase Claypool tweets after that, me immediately after the interview, um, and it's, it's Claypool lying on the ground uh, on the field, just like passed out, obviously. Don't do dip, kids. If there's, if, listen, I, I got... Depends on how old you are watching this show. If you're older, baggy clothes. If you're younger, if you're a teenager, if you're one of the kids out there, you're in college, don't do dip. Don't do dip. Don't, don't do dip. Just, and, just drink heavily. And just drink As long <laughs> as you're 21. As long as you're 21, of course. 21 yeah, and over. Well, you're one of those young kids who's at least 21. Yeah, and Chase Claypool obviously played against... Everyone's a young kid to me. Like, you're a young kid to me. I'm like, a young you know, kid. Yeah. Right, yeah. Young exactly. father of three. Claypool played against the Bucks, not Tom Brady's old team, the Patriots. Uh, and I agree with you that Pat Frymerhoof, it was all over the middle for Claypool. He's basically playing as a tight end that was just lined up as a receiver and a lot out of the slot. All right, let's jump into a couple of your guys, Terry McLaurin and Curtis Samuel, uh, playing the Packers as five and a half point dogs, keeping it open or closing it out on them now that they get 
Taylor Heineke at quarterback. I'm keeping it open on McLaurin. I'm likely closing it out on Curtis Samuel. McLaurin comes in at wide receiver 27 for me, so I'm as a top 30 play. I'm as a wide receiver three. Certainly not been the kind of year that you hoped for when you drafted McLaurin, but it's worth noting that the commanders are top six in the NFL in pass attempts per game. And as you see here on your screen, there is a connection between McLaurin and Taylor Heineke. Of the 16 games they played together last year, McLaurin got seven or more targets in 11 of those games, four different games with over 90 receiving yards. He, you know, he had some fantasy success with Taylor Heineke under center. Now, in fairness, they didn't have Curtis Samuel, they didn't have Jahan Dotson, they didn't have Logan Thomas for much of that year. So McLaurin was really all they had last year, and there are more weapons available now for Taylor Heineke. But as five and a half point underdogs at home, this is going to be a pass heavy team. Heineke's been in the system for a long time now, for a couple of years, so they're comfortable with him running it. And I do think that the familiarity between Heineke and McLaurin, as they're trailing in this game, they should be looking for him. So probably not a great shot at scoring a touchdown, which is why I have him as a low end wide receiver three. But again, Wide receiver 27, I'm more keeping it open on McLaurin. Samuel, I'm probably more closing it out. Again, wide receiver 37 for me here. My concern on Samuel, right, is that fewer targets, receptions, and receiving yards in week six. We just don't know. Is there any kind of connection between him and Heineke? Um, uh, if there's a positive to hang your hat on, here with Curtis Samuel, he's had eight targets or more in four to six games this year. But then you, again, you look at last week, two receptions for six yards. It feels like after that hot start, he's kind of come back down to earth like much of the commander's offense. Yes. Terry McLaurin was wide receiver 25 last year with Taylor Heineke, largely quarterback. And I think that's a reasonable expectation for him going forward yeah. around that wide receiver 25 mark. Now to end, we have a little, little chaser. Get it? Because we're at a bar drinking. Yeah, 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 yeah. The laugh to mouth. percent. Taysom Hill doing. is the yeah. chaser. A pretty apt chaser. Now, a lot of people might say, like, Barry, if you guys are going to make fun of, like, the conventions, why are yeah. you, like, why are you going to continue doing them? Mm. Because that's what we do. That's what we've got. It's, it's truly, it's, it's really, it's self-hatred yeah. is what it is. We're just mocking ourselves because we're, we're dead inside. And by we being dead inside, I really mean Jay. Me. And Denny Carter. And we Denny Carter, obviously. Yep. All right, All right. Taysom Hill. Uh, didn't do much. Uh, last week against the Bengals after but the incredible game. He before. did what you expected. And we talked about this. Like he's played under 30% of snaps basically for the year. Last week he played 21% of the offensive snaps. Like if he did not score the five rushing touchdowns this year, and again, he did, so you have to count him. But if he did not, he'd be tight end 33. He is a touchdown dependent tight end who doesn't play a ton of snaps. Having said that, he's probably got a better chance at scoring a touchdown than most tight ends because of the versatility of him, because they use him in the, um, uh, in the run game as well. And so going up against Arizona, which is a top 12 run defense, you don't love it, but Jameis Winston banged up. My expectation is it will be Andy Dalton. Uh, we don't know yet on the status of Michael Thomas or Jarvis Landry. We do expect Chris Olave here, but against a pretty good Arizona offense that we expect to score some points against New Orleans, uh, they're going to have to try to find other guys to manufacture points, and Taysom Hill will be in uh, that mix. He comes in at tight end 16 for me, so he is a, he's a touchdown-dependent tight end too, yep. which is what we've been saying all on. Yeah, I think that with Taysom as well, that he's got more downside the rest of the season than upside because he's doing this now while Thomas is out, Landry's out, Olave just missed. Like Those guys you would expect would get healthier as the season goes on, and then there would be less need for Taysom Hill and his many gadgets. And All right, yet, we not so much. Uh, no, we are going to go to break. When we come back, we're going to do fantasy trivia. Get it? Because you play trivia at a bar. Bar trivia, yeah, bar, bar trivia. trivia. Exactly. exactly. That's what we're doing. See, yeah. welcome to our bar. Convention. This is fun. I just, it feels like we're not respecting the audience, but we have to explain stuff to them. Download the Roto World app to receive breaking player news all season long. Stay ahead of the competition by favoriting players on your roster and get the latest injury updates, player news, plus much more delivered right to your phone. Available in the App Store today. Okay, Matthew Barry, we've got a new Bar segment. trivia, bar trivia, but it's yeah. about fantasy players. Exactly. Yes. Bar trivia as you welcome into the happy hour here with Jay Croucher. I am Matthew Barry and... Jay, this player averages 22.9 fantasy points per game at home, but just seven fantasy points on the road. He has had four games this season with 10 or more targets and a touch on the season, which is most in the NFL. We're inviting the audience to play along with us at home. Yes, and uh, if you know the answer, just blurt it out yeah, wherever you are. You're on a train, just say the guy's name really loudly. 
like tied for sixth in red zone targets this yep. season. He's the fourth overall pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, and it is... Amari Cooper. That's right. Amari Cooper is the answer to this answer. So uh, what are we doing with Amari Cooper? I think you're starting him uh, this week, right? Uh, you know, let's let's be clear, right? Uh, you know, playing ba- playing a Baltimore Ravens defense that has struggled defensively. They're middle of the pack over the last four weeks. And so given the fact that I get it, this game isn't on the road and he has struggled on the road, but uh, he's getting such a massive target share. Uh, to me, I'm starting Amari Cooper. Again, I am as a top 12 play this week. Yeah, I don't really understand why people don't. There's just something about Amari Cooper where he's not thought of among the elite receivers. I think it's probably how it ended in Dallas. But this guy's had 4,000-yard seasons in the NFL. He's had 100-plus targets the past three years coming into this one. And the other thing, too, is that he's going to be the Sean Watson's wide receiver one come the fantasy yeah. playoffs. So I think that he has significant upside the rest of the way. Okay. Second wide receiver that we're going to get into. Over the last three weeks, this player is wide receiver nine in fantasy points per game. In two different games this season, the player has gotten over 38% target share. That's a lot. And this season, this wide receiver is averaging more fantasy points per game than Mike Evans, Debo Samuel, and C.D. Lamb. And... We'll probably give it away. He scored his first ever NFL touchdown in his 39th career game. Matthew, who is it? It's Jacoby Myers, and you're starting him. Like, it's not a great matchup at home against the Chicago Bears. Bears are actually pretty good defense, but again, given the volume of Jacoby Myers, given the fact that they've gotten really good quarterback play, whether it'll be Mac Jones on Monday night or Bailey Zappi, the Zappi hour once again, uh, I, I think his... The fact that he's gotten so much, um, he's gotten so much, uh, so many looks. Again, a 38% target share in two different games this year. Like he's he's producing, he's getting a ton of looks, and they've been more productive in their passing attack than uh, than I think they have. Then, then he's gotten a lot more. Um, he's been a lot more productive fantasy wise. The passing game has been more efficient than I think people thought it was going to be coming into the season for New England. Yeah, and it started happening for Myers at the end of last year, where last year in the final six games of the season, he got a minimum of eight targets uh, in every game. So this is, it's been a progression now. He's starting to pick up. I think he's shown that he has a rapport both with Mac Jones and Bailey Zappi. So whoever is a quarterback for New England, I think that he is kind of protected against that situation in terms of a raised floor. And I, I kind of think that the, the Patriots are... A, they're not a sleeping giant because that's too optimistic, but they're like a sleeping, like a m- sleeping mid-sized mythical creature. The Patriots. Uh, they uh, have sleeping the, mid-sized mythical yeah. creature. The, the defense has looked fantastic. Yep. The concern was the cornerbacks, but this kid Jack Jones coming in has been phenomenal. Uh, the O-line is excellent. Ramondre Stevenson uh, is showing that he can be an uh, elite fantasy option at running back. And I just think the Patriots kind of want to be be involved in the Patriots all of a sudden, where they look like they were going to be a disaster at the start of the season. They're playing good defense, they're running the ball, and now they're getting enough production out of their passing game that you're like, you can't just load up the box. And so, yeah, what do you know? Bill Belichick can coach football, turns out. Like, you know, why do we doubt Bill? The Bills, the Buffalo Bills, are running over the division. But, you know, given the injuries, the quarterback feels like the Dolphins are, you know, coming back to earth a little bit here. And so, uh, yeah, I think. I agree with you. Uh, I think the Patriots are kind of a sleeping, mid-sized, <laughs> mythical creature. <laughs> and I do like uh, I do like Jacoby Myers as a high-end flex this week. He comes in at 26 for me in my week seven Bill, Bill wide receiver ranks. Bill Belichick's 100-1 to 1 to win Coach of the Year on BetMGM. Look, I don't think he's going to win because there's Nick Sirianni and the two well, and he never coaches. wins. The, like, never every, wins. like, the, the, the award... There's almost never a year, especially during that run, where Belichick shouldn't have won it. I mean, Belichick was so good, but he, he's a victim of his own success. Yep. People expect Belichick to be good. So right, so we, that award always goes to the surprises. But because people expect that the Patriots act to be bad, yeah. maybe he, maybe it, there's a make good. You know how sometimes you're like, though, at the Oscars, they'll give the best actor award to an actor who you're like, well, that, you know, that's not that guy's best film. Yeah, DiCaprio but, for The Dicap- Revenant. Right, no. right. But they're like, you know, we... He's never won, and he should have won something along the yes. way. So we're just going to give it to him because it's more of a lifetime achievement award than yep. it is necessarily about that one movie. To your point, DiCaprio and the Revenant, like, 
Um, that's not even close to his best movie. Or Scorsese his best role. for The Departed is that, the, the quintessential. Uh, yeah, one. exactly. Yeah. So, Didn't get it for Goodfellas or right. Taxi Driver or Raging Bull, but we'll give it to you for The Departed, yeah, which right. is a good film, but but not like yeah. those other ones. Yeah. Exactly. So I think there's a chance that I like that bet. I like 100 to one on Belichick to win Coach of the Year because I could see a scenario like that, especially if the Patriots make the playoffs here. All right, I got one for you. Yeah. And one for everyone at home. 33% of this player's total fantasy points this season came last week in week six. 33%. Last week, this player first scored his first touchdown since week 17 of the 2020 season. This player is playing on his second team of his career. And these days, he's known more for his TikTok <laughs> than his fantasy points. And the answer is... Juju Smith Schuster, sure, sure. who had his best game of the season against the Bills this season overall, a wide receiver 32, 27 receptions, 370 receiving yards, got that one touchdown, as you mentioned, 68 fantasy points. So he's very much in that Ezekiel Elliott, Tony Pollard type of mold. They're similar in fantasy point production, but I just think with Juju, what I'd be more concerned about is that he only had five targets against the Bills. He caught all five of his targets, but to me, he just he just doesn't look like the same guy that he was in 2018. I think that was the thought because he is so young. He's a lot younger than you'd expect, but he just hasn't looked like that guy, and I just don't think he's going to get the consistent targets. Prior to the game last week where he had the 113-yard game, he had under 50 yards receiving in three of the previous four games, and I'm with you. To the eye test, he doesn't look doesn't look explosive. And and the the challenge with starting a non Kelsey Chief pass catcher is the fact that like they do spread it around. And like Miko Hardman got in the end zone last week. And so and then you're like, okay, I'm in on this guy. And then then suddenly MVS has a big game. It just you know again sometimes when players talk, you should believe them. At the beginning of the year, Patrick Wilms said it's not going to be just two guys. It's going to be everyone week to week. You're going to have to figure out who it is. And yeah. He's absolutely right. On the road at San Francisco, the, the Niners, of course, the fifth best pass defense over the last four weeks. They've been better. They've been banged up, I should say. But still, I, I don't know. I'm out on Juju. Uh, I'm out on Juju this week as a top 20 play. I think he's, he's a wide receiver three where you're hoping for something. Yeah, I mean, I think there is upside in the back end of the season as he gets more involvement in the KC offense, gets more of a rapport and chemistry with Mahomes because, I mean, 2018, he had 111 receptions on 166 targets, over 1,400 yards, seven touchdowns, and he's 25 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels like he's 29. It feels like he's Allen Robinson's age, but he's still young and he's still coming off injuries, so maybe there is a bit of upside to come for Juju, but you definitely can't count on And you can't count on he's any a, receiver. He, you're hoping for a touchdown. Yep. Right? He's had one this entire season. Like He's a, he's a wide receiver. He's a, you know, hopeful wide receiver three this week just because there's so many wide receivers out. Yep. But normally, in a normal week, he'd be outside my top 30. Okay, let's jump into a running back. Uh, and this running back never got over 15 carries Damn. in his entire college career. He leads the NFL with 16 broken tackles this season. And through the first five games this season, uh, this running back had more touches than Christian McCaffrey, Austin Eckler, and Dalvin Cook. And, uh, yeah, this is a Matthew Berry thing. Fantasy managers are in lovey with him. Yeah. I think, obviously, it's Damian Pierce. It's Damian Pierce. Because you get it, lovey. Like, lovey Smith. He's the, uh, he's the head coach. And so, instead of saying in love with him, they're in lovey with him. I think yeah. That, yeah, I got that. Yeah, did I got you? That one. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. You, you had kind of a glazed <laughs> look uh, uh, on your face here. Uh, look, I think Damian Pierce... To me, obviously, you're starting him this week. I have as a top 10 play, comes in at number nine uh, for me as well. Three touch, three, a touchdown in three straight games here. He hasn't had less than 80 yards uh, rushing uh, in the last three as well. On the road uh, this week at Las Vegas. Raiders, this is a, the over-under is 47 and a half. We expect a lot of points to be scored. So just the massive amount of volume for, for Damian Pierce. The fact that we think they, they've been more plucky than you would think and I think the thing that's encouraging here is that you know five targets last week six targets the week before like they're involving him in the passing game the first week of the season it was all Rex Burke and you're like oh they must not trust him in pass pro but seeing him out there he's playing a ton of snaps on first second and third down they're not scared to take him they don't have to take him out of the game when it's an obvious passing down as well so Pierce to me um, is not only a locked in top 10 play this week but for the foreseeable future as well 
Raiders, Titans, Eagles you don't love, at Giants. So it gets a little bit tougher. But again, I think the volume there just keeps him in your lineup. Yeah, I think the two concerns would be, first, the first trivia point that he's never gotten over 15 carries in a game in his college career. Yeah. And that maybe so he's fresh. Want, yeah, maybe he's fresh. Maybe they, yeah, maybe he's just right. uh, doesn't have much turn on the tires. But I'm not sure they're going to be giving him this much volume all season. And then the other concern is that just, they're just the Texans. And they're seven-point underdogs to the Raiders, who are one and four. But they always are. I know, but it was like last year, they've the been, rushing here's was the thing, so it, bad. I get it, but they've been so, they've been plucky. They've actually, I mean, you know, you don't really love to use that word, but the truth is that's exactly yeah, what they've been. They've, they've, been, they've been plucky. They've hung into games that they had no business hanging into. Um, and, uh, the, you know, they, they're not getting blown out. They're not getting blown out in an embarrassing fashion most weeks. Like, they're hanging in there tough. And so, as long as it's somewhat close and also just knowing Lovey's, you know, demeanor. He's a conservative-minded coach anyway. He's going to want to run the ball. and So even if he's not as efficient, I think he, he gets the volume there. I hear you on the idea that, hey, here's a guy that, uh, that hasn't had a ton of work, and so Kenny handled being a workhorse back. But he runs so physically. He's just yep. like the way he's built – Makes me feel like he can, you know, like the reasons they didn't use him as an every down back in, in college has nothing to do with him and more about the offense they were running. Yeah, I think offensive rookie of the year now, I think it's three guys. It's Brace, it's Damian Pierce, and it's Kenneth Walker. Uh, rest of the season, would you rather have Damian Pierce or Kevin, uh, Kenneth Walker? I think I'd rather have Kenneth Walker. I, just, I think it's better a better offense. offense. Yeah, and they play up tempo. I think you'd yeah. rather have Brace Hall over both of those guys. Agree with that. Though. Okay. Let's jump into another running back. This player has gotten over 75% of his team's running back carries in every game this season. This player has the third most rushing yards in the NFL. He has back-to-back 30-point -back fantasy games. And uh, he was once Matthew Berry's fantasy ride or die before making the preseason hate list for three straight seasons. Yeah. What a heel turn. Yeah, well, that's I'm the, I'm the heel. Yep. And, yeah, and, well, you turn on this guy, now he's burning you back. Yeah, you know wait, who it is. It is Josh Jacobs. That's right. And by the way, next season, season eight, we'll be on <laughs> it. Just giving you a heads up now. So you should prepare, talk to your publicist, figure out a way to, strategy to counteract that. Uh, the thing on Josh Jacobs, though, is that the concern for him was coming into the season, would the volume be there? Would the passing down work be there? We didn't expect that to be the case. And the fact of the matter is, is it has been. He's been the seventh best running back in fantasy so far on a points per game basis here. As you see the numbers on your screen, almost 500 rushing yards. He's got the, the three rushing touchdowns. He's being involved in the passing game as well with the 17 receptions through five games. Obviously they had the buy in week six. And so given the amount of volume that he's getting, getting the three down work that he has, the, the, um, the passing game usage as well. And then this game script, where as you mentioned, Raiders are a, a touchdown favorite at home against a Texans team that is bottom three in the NFL in rush defense over the last three, uh, uh, sorry, over the last four weeks. Yeah, it feels like this is a big Josh Jacobs game once again. I like a team that's come off of the bye. Like Raiders have had two weeks to prepare for this Texans team. So Josh Jacobs should be fresh and ready to go. Again, Hammett as a, uh, He's my running back six this week. Yeah, I think rest of the season, his outlook, like right now in BetMGM, he's yeah. the third favorite in the NFL to lead the league in rushing yards. He's wow. plus 700. That's where he's at. And it, running back, it's just so grim. It's such a grim, desolate landscape. Yeah. The guy with the fifth most rushing yards in the NFL right now is Lamar Jackson. I don't know if you know, he's a quarterback. Uh, fourth is Miles Sanders. Uh, I'm writing so, that down. Yeah, Lamar, Lamar write it down. Yeah, he's going to get he's going to get paid like quarterback, quarterback as well. I just think that Jacobs, I would project him to be a, a top five fantasy running back going forward. I don't think there's too many guys who are clearly in front of him. I think Saquon is definitely Eckler too, and McCaffrey if he maybe sticks around. But I think Jacobs is right up in that mix. All right, let's close out with a tight end. Okay. Your favorite position. Sure. On the football field. Obviously, yeah. yeah. So last week, this player finished with a season-high 27.3% target share. Also last week, this player set a franchise record for receptions in a single game for his position. He finished as tight end four in the 2020 season. And this past offseason, his quarterback went on ayahuasca trips, which uh, I chickened out of in my younger years while I was in Peru. And Bolivia, who's this man? <laughs> Matthew Berry? I believe this is, uh, the ayahuasca is what uh, gave it away. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm going to say the, uh, 
This is uh, Big Bob Tunyon for uh, the Green Bay Packers as well. And so Tunyon obviously coming off the monster game last week as well. And, and so we've seen this before, you know, as, as you mentioned, as you mentioned, this is a guy who was a top five fantasy tight end two years ago in 2020. He comes in as a borderline tight end 10 for me because he's playing the commanders who, again, as we've talked about, you know, struggle defensively, struggle in the middle of the field. They give up a ton of, uh, they give up a ton of points here. You know, Washington is, um, uh, you know, has struggled while they played better defensively recently. They're still no one that you have to worry about here. And so off of the big game and given sort of like what a wasteland tight end is, you know, when you're, once you get past the elite guys, you're just like, okay, who's got the best shot at scoring a touchdown. And based on last week and based on Aaron Rodgers being angry after two straight losses, I think both guys get on the right track uh, against my terrible commanders and win this game. Yep. And, and Rodgers just has a big game going up, you know, and uses Tunyon as part of that. Yeah, I think it's a fantasy-friendly schedule in a way coming up where they're big favorites against Washington, expect that they'll be throwing relatively with ease there. And then at Buffalo, where right now Aaron Rodgers, the look-ahead line on that, Aaron yeah. Rodgers is an eight-and-a-half-point underdog. In Josh Buffalo. Allen, wow. Yeah, again, uh, on Sunday Night Football. It's just crazy to think Aaron Rodgers, who was the MVP last year on a one seed, is now an yeah. eight-and-a-half-point dog to Josh Allen. But at the same time, like, how can you be confident backing the Packers You, you definitely can't. Uh, um, after, after the Bills, they play the Lions, as you mentioned, and they're home to Dallas. So yep. three straight good matchups. The Bills have a very good defense, but again, we think game throwing. script works in the Packers' favor here. If If – Ever there was a week for the Packers offense to get on track and Aaron Rodgers specifically to get on track. I think it's this week against uh, against my commanders. And so, uh, again, he's a, touchdown dependent, he's a touchdown dependent tight end, but I think he's got a better shot than most given the matchup, his quarterback, and what happened last week. Okay. We're going to go to break. When we come back, last call. Dive in to the Miami Steelers. Sunday Night Football blockbuster. A couple of Sunday Night Predictor Last calls from us on Najee Harris and Tyreek Hill. That we'll literally might have been the worst throw to break. <laughs> no, just couldn't figure out. Like, in we fairness going? to Jay, English is a second language. <laughs> yeah. English is a we second language. We speak Portuguese language. in Australia. The NFL season is here, and the NBC Sports Predictor app is giving you a shot at winning $100,000 by entering Sunday Night 7's free contest between the Steelers and the Dolphins. So if you don't have the NBC Sports Predictor app, go download it now. $550,000 handed out so far, 25,000 winners, and it is free, Matthew Barry. I like free money. You like free money? I like free money, there which you is, go. Uh, and that's a way to get it. I mean, not for me or you, because we're NBC employees. Yeah, but technically. But the way I continue to do crappy shows, I might soon be fired, <laughs> and then I would be eligible to play Sunday Night 7. It's all, you see what I'm saying? Like, it's all... It's all happening. It's all it's all a master plan. I have this all figured out. Again, massive talent. The wheels are turning. Okay. Galaxy brain. First Galaxy question brain. is around Tyreek Hill and his receiving yards. Okay. And so the bands are on screen. Less than 50 yards and then all the way through to 110 or more. I'm going over 110 yards for Tyreek wow, Hill. You know okay. why? Why? Because he's gone 160 plus three times already. Yeah. I think Tyreek Hill's the best receiver in the NFL right now. He might be. I would take him over Justin Jefferson, over Cooper Cup, Stephon Diggs. I just think that he spaces the field in a way that those guys don't. And also now, you know, previously some of his big games would be catching an 80-yard bomb. Now he's just doing it with volume. He's yeah. getting crazy targets. I think he's the guy. I don't understand why he's plus 600 at BetMGM for Offensive Player of the Year. I think he might almost be the favorite for that because right. he's leading the league yeah. in receiving yards. I think it might go quarterback this year, but uh, Tyreek Hill over 110 yards against the Steelers defense, which without TJ Watt, I don't think is as intimidating. They've certainly struggled, and the expectation, by the way, is that Tua tonga will be yep. under center for the Dolphins, so that certainly helps them. So the, the next question is about, uh, is, is about Najee Harris and... Uh, <laughs> Totally, as you see it here on your screen, how many rushing yards does Najee Harris get? I'm going to say 55 to 64, somewhere in there. So just the third, the third lowest band, if you will. Uh, you know, the fact is, is that over the last four weeks, the Dolphins are top six in the NFL in rushing uh, and fewest rushing yards allowed. Uh, the 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 uh, the Steelers are seven point underdogs in this game. They're likely going to be trailing here as well. So can they quote establish the run against Miami? I'm not sure that they can. Volume may get him there in the first half, but 
Nothing about what Najee Harris has done so far this year makes you feel great about him. So, yeah, Najee Harris, for me, I'm going to take the 50, you know, that, that 40 to 54 range, right? You know, the whatever, the 55 to 64 range is what I meant. The 55 to 64 range. All right. So there you go. That is our show. We are back tomorrow with a love-hate show. You don't have to stay here. Uh, I'm sorry. You, you can't <laughs> stay here. No, I screwed up. You screwed me all up. That's just the fact of the matter is. It's like, just whatever. We need to kill it. You can't stay here. You don't have to go home, but you got to get the hell out of here for Jay and Matthew. Better tomorrow. Peace out. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotorworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least – being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.